Hey everybody, Drew here. Uh, if you know the channel, this is still the nightmare of the one-stripped bolt on the Tundra that involved taking out its differential, its sway bar, its steering rack, dropping the oil pan, removing the oil pump. Anyways, so it's time to put the rack back in and I thought you guys might be able to use this. So this is a piece of yarn that I borrowed from Jade, my wife, and unfortunately the front wheels, they kind of have some pretty extreme toe-in when they're off the ground. Um, obviously this vehicle probably has, you know, maybe a 16th of an inch of toe-in when it's under load. Um, so it doesn't give you, uh, you know, you kind of have to eyeball or somehow measure the difference between the two tires. But the, the premise is that the string is tied in the center. This is five spokes. That spoke there just happens to be in the center. It goes around the front uh, tire underneath the truck and around the passenger tire and then centered again on the back wheel. So it crosses the center line of all the tires. And I've got videos on how I've done actual alignments. I mean, cars that I've put 15,000 miles on that are wearing tires evenly by measuring at home similar to this. That's not what we're doing with this Tundra. All we're doing is just making sure that when I reconnect the intermediate shaft, um, which this is irrelevant if you're working on a different vehicle, but that guy there, that's uh, north of that's the steering column. South of that is the collapsible intermediate shaft. And then, I doubt I'll be able to show you, but in there, somewhere. Um, try. Well, it's in there. If you work on cars, you believe me, I'm sure. Uh, is the other end that looks like that that connects to the steering rack. So this was just a simple way for me to accomplish making sure that my wheels are pointed in the straight ahead position. Um, I did mark everything, but I did so with white paint, and this project started a week ago. So as you could imagine, been through some uh, some hard moments. Anyway, I used the top of the steering wheel, which was perfect when the truck was going straight down the road, as a guide for inside the vehicle, and um, everything kind of fell together. So I will obviously find out really quickly if I'm wrong. Uh, and I will have to look and see if the steering angle sensor for this vehicle is in the clock spring. If it is, I can make it up in the steering wheel. If it's not, I get to scoop my butt back underneath the truck. The point of the matter is, number one, if you're watching this video, before you do the work, uh, take a freaking Dremel tool if you have to. Anything you can describe where everything lines up. There's not a terrible amount of splines. Say there's 36 splines. There might be, there could be 48, like Jaguars have 48, some GM vehicles have as few as 24, but it's probably 36 splines, which means 360 degrees, every spline is 10 degrees. So it's not like you're going to get your steering wheel off a little bit. You're going to notice it's going to be a tenth of a rotation off. And again, if the steering angle sensor is in the clock spring, you know, a steering column without a clock spring in it, don't go crazy with a clock spring because you'll break it. But a steering column will just spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. And it will break the clock spring if it's not connected and you just spin it like Wheel of Fortune, right? So if I find that I'm off, I can drive the truck down my very long driveway. It's like 10 cars long, maybe whatever, six cars. Point is I can drive the truck totally straight. The steering wheel will be one spline off because I'm at least that good to get within a spline. Uh, I would then be able to shut off the truck, disconnect the battery, take the steering wheel off along with the airbag and the clock spring, move the steering wheel one spline so it's correct and everything would at that point of course line up because again there are only so many splines. I would then put the steering, uh, the clock spring back on, the steering wheel back on and the truck would never know unless the steering wheel position sensor is not in the clock spring. If you happen to know that about Tundras, this 2008 Tundra, uh, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Uh, hopefully, I don't have to find out, but if I do, I will post back. But the point is, you know, a string that's against your tire there and that is equally against your, uh, you know, the back of your tire and the front of your tire in the center, if the string is just lightly touching the one in the middle, it's fixed to that, it's fixed to that. If it's lightly touching right where my finger is, we know these are dead nuts parallel. Obviously, again, with some significant toe-in off of load, the other side is really pushing that string. But I eyeballed it at about half an inch, so I gave it a quarter on both sides. Nice, nice. Fired everything together, and my steering wheel is pretty much where I would have wanted it to be. So hopefully this is helpful. Like I said, the big help is this. If you haven't started yet, 
don't be a turkey like me and use a white paint marker. Scribe it, man. Get under there with like a sharpened, hardened chisel and pound it in if you have to. Just give yourself reference marks. I never imagined what I was getting into when I started this project. And the least of my worries is being a spline off in my steering because I now know underneath this truck better than my bedroom and my office. Um, but anyways, hey, if this was helpful, like the video, please, and subscribe to the channel because I basically, anything I think would be helpful to you guys, I record it and I put it up and I work on a lot of cars and a lot of times I don't have the, you know, the ideal environment tools or information and yet I seem to always get through. I'm blessed like that and I just want to share. So uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much. Goodbye.